The Tarkalian counselor's sharp words cut like a plasma blade through the human delegation's high hopes. Your kind has no place among the civilized races of the galaxy, Karos declared, his voice dripping with disdain as he glared at the crestfallen Ambassador Griffin and his team. The council's chambers echoed with the jeers and taunts of the alien representatives, their mocking laughter driving home the depth of their contempt for Earth and its inferior culture. Griffin's hands balled into fists, his knuckles turning white with barely contained rage. This was the third time the council had denied humanity a seat at the galactic table, dismissing mankind's achievements and potential with callous indifference. But the old diplomat was not ready to accept defeat. If the council wanted to play dirty, then he would fight back with humanity's most potent weapon, the unbreakable bond between man and beast. Back on Earth, Griffin unveiled his audacious plan to the world government, sending a delegation of genetically and cybernetically enhanced pets to serve as humanity's goodwill ambassadors. Dogs, cats, and other beloved critters, augmented with incredible abilities and trained in the art of diplomacy, would win the hearts and minds of the galactic public where human envoys had failed. It was a desperate gamble, but one that just might pay off. Among the chosen ambassadors was Zeus, Griffin's own loyal golden retriever. With augmented intelligence, telepathic abilities, and an endearing personality, Zeus embodied the best of both human ingenuity and animal innocence. As the pioneering pet delegation boarded their sleek diplomatic vessel, bound for Tarkus Prime and an uncertain future, Griffin knew that the fate of humanity hung in the balance. Would Zeus and his fellow ambassadors succeed in proving mankind's worth to the galaxy? Or would they fall victim to the treacherous galactic politics that sought to keep Earth in its place? The stage was set for a battle unlike any the universe had ever seen. One fought not with weapons, but with wagging tails and purrs that could melt even the coldest alien heart. As the sleek diplomatic vessel descended through the swirling clouds of Tarkus Prime, Zeus pressed his nose against the viewport, marveling at the alien cityscape below. Towering spires of gleaming metal and crystal jutted from the planet's surface, connected by a web of skyways teeming with flying vehicles. The Golden Retriever's augmented eyes zoomed in on the crowds gathering around the landing pad, his enhanced hearing picking up the excited chatter of the Tarkalian citizens. Ambassador Griffin placed a hand on Zeus's head, scratching behind the dog's ears. This is it, boy, he murmured. Our chance to show the galaxy what humanity and our beloved companions are made of. The ship touched down with a gentle thud, and the pet delegation disembarked to a cacophony of cheers and applause. Zeus bounded down the ramp, his tail wagging furiously as he drank in the exotic sights, sounds, and smells of the alien world. Tarkalian children giggled and cooed as they reached out to pet the adorable creatures, their parents snapping pictures and whispering excitedly. As the ambassadors made their way through the crowd, Zeus's telepathic abilities picked up a wave of curiosity and wonder emanating from the Tarkalians. He projected feelings of friendship and goodwill in return, his mental touch gentle and reassuring. The dog couldn't help but grin as he sensed the locals' hearts warming to the Terran delegation. Local media drones buzzed around the group, their lenses fixated on the charming critters and their augmented abilities. Zeus and his fellow ambassadors put on a dazzling display, leaping over each other in gravity-defying acrobatics and solving complex puzzles with their enhanced intelligence. The crowd gasped and cheered, their applause echoing off the towering buildings. High above the city, in the opulent halls of the royal palace, Emperor Vargon watched the spectacle unfold on a hovering viewscreen. The aged ruler stroked his graying beard, his eyes misting over as he remembered the companionship of his beloved Zephyr. The rare creature had been his constant companion for centuries, a source of comfort and joy in the often lonely life of an emperor. Summon the Terran delegation to the palace, Vargon commanded, his voice heavy with emotion. I would meet these remarkable creatures in their human handlers. As the pet ambassadors marveled at the grandeur of the royal court, Zeus couldn't shake the feeling that this was a pivotal moment for both Earth and Tarkas. The dog glanced at Ambassador Griffin, sensing the man's hope and trepidation. Whatever challenges lay ahead, Zeus knew that he and his fellow critters would face them head-on, armed with the unbreakable bond between humans 
and their furry friends. Emperor Vargan's eyes sparkled with delight as he watched Zeus and the other ambassadors showcase their remarkable abilities in the palace's grand auditorium. The Golden Retriever's telepathic connection with the ruler deepened by the day, fostering a bond that transcended species and culture. Vargan's reborn Zephyr, a majestic cybernetic eagle, perched on the emperor's shoulder, observing the proceedings with regal poise. In the shadows of the auditorium, Whiskers' emerald eyes narrowed, jealousy flickering like a flame within their depths. The tomcat's sleek black fur bristled as he watched Zeus bask in Vargon's favor. Whiskers' enhanced intelligence whirred, calculating ways to undermine his canine rival and claim the emperor's affection for himself. As Zeus took the stage for a holographic presentation on Earth's history, Whiskers' paw darted out, interfacing with a control panel. The dog's voice wavered as the projections flickered and distorted, images of humanity's triumphs replaced by embarrassing bloopers and gaffes. Zeus faltered, confusion etched on his face as the audience tittered and whispered. Ambassador Griffin frowned, leaning closer to Sergeant Magnus. Something's not right here, he muttered, watching as Zeus struggled to regain his composure. Keep a close eye on things, Magnus. We can't afford any more slip-ups. The German shepherd nodded curtly, his combat enhancements humming beneath his sleek black and tan coat. Magnus's keen senses swept the auditorium, searching for any signs of sabotage or treachery. In the depths of the Tarkalian capital, Counselor Karos met with a shadowy figure in a dimly lit alleyway. Zoltar emerged from the darkness, his reptilian features twisted in a predatory grin. The pets will be eliminated, he hissed, flexing his razor-sharp claws. I'll make sure of it. Karos nodded, his eyes glinting with malice. See that you do, he growled. The human infestation must be purged from our world. As the sons of Tarkas Prime dipped below the horizon, Zeus and the other ambassadors gathered in the palace gardens, relishing a moment of peace amidst the whirlwind of diplomacy. Magnus patrolled the perimeter, his enhanced senses on high alert. Suddenly, a plasma bolt sizzled through the air, narrowly missing Zeus's head. Chaos erupted as Zoltar and his team of assassins burst from the foliage, weapons blazing. The ambassadors scattered, their augmented reflexes propelling them to safety. Magnus barked orders to the security team, his voice cutting through the din of battle. Zeus leaped to his side, his telepathic abilities linking the minds of the defenders as they fought back against the relentless onslaught. Amidst the chaos, Whiskers spotted Zoltar taking aim at Emperor Vargon and his beloved Zephyr. Time seemed to slow as the Tomcat faced a moment of truth. With a yowl of defiance, Whiskers launched himself into the path of the plasma bolt, his body absorbing the lethal energy meant for the Tarkalian ruler. Zeus watched in horror as Whiskers crumpled to the ground, his life ebbing away in a pool of crimson. Rage and grief surged through the Golden Retriever's veins propelling him toward Zoltar with superhuman speed. The two titans clashed in a blur of claws and fangs, their battle a microcosm of the larger war between tradition and progress. As Magnus and the security team subdued the remaining assassins, Zeus emerged victorious, pinning Zoltar to the ground with a paw on his throat. Emperor Vargon rushed to Whiskers' side, cradling the fallen feline in his arms as tears streamed down his face. In the aftermath of the attack, Ambassador Griffin gathered his team, his face grim with tenacity. We have a traitor in our midst, he declared, his voice heavy with anger and betrayal. Someone on Tarkas is working to sabotage our mission. We must root them out before they strike again. As Whiskers' funeral pyre blazed against the night sky, Zeus and his fellow ambassadors stood tall, their perseverance hardened by the sacrifice of their fallen comrade. They knew that the road ahead would be fraught with danger and deception, but they would not rest until the alliance between Earth and Tarkas was sealed in the unbreakable bonds of friendship and trust. Zeus padded silently through the ornate corridors of the Tarkalian palace, his enhanced senses on high alert. The golden retriever's cybernetic implants hummed softly as he processed the myriad of information flooding his augmented brain. Behind him, the remaining pet ambassadors moved with practiced stealth, 
their own enhancements allowing them to blend seamlessly into the shadows. As they approached a group of servants gathered in hushed conversation, Zeus reached out with his telepathic abilities, gently probing their minds. Fragments of thoughts and emotions washed over him. Fear, uncertainty, and ah, quite durst something else. A flickering image of Counselor Karos, his face twisted in a triumphant sneer. Zeus's hackles raised. He glanced at Mittens, the Siamese cat whose own telepathic abilities complemented his own. Her blue eyes narrowed, and she gave a subtle nod. They were on to something. Days passed in a whirlwind of covert surveillance and clandestine information gathering. The pet ambassadors utilized every tool at their disposal, from Rex's infrared vision to Polly's ability to mimic voices and hack into secure communications networks. Slowly but surely, a sinister picture began to emerge. In the bowels of the palace's central database, Zeus and his team huddled around a holographic display. Encrypted transmissions flickered to life, their contents laid bare by the pet's decryption algorithms. By the stars, breathed Buddy, the corgi analyst. It's worse than we thought. Karos and his faction, they're planning a coup. Zeus's eyes widened as he absorbed the implications. The traditionalists weren't just trying to sabotage the human Tarkalian alliance. They saw the pets as infiltrators, a threat to their very way of life and their next move would be devastating. We need to warn Ambassador Griffin and Emperor Vargon, Zeus barked, his tail rigid with urgency. They're planning to frame us for Vargon's assassination during the upcoming ceremony. The team raced through the palace, their paws barely touching the ground. But as they burst into the human delegation's quarters, they found only chaos and confusion. Palace guards were everywhere, their weapons trained on the stunned human diplomats. What's the meaning of this? Ambassador Griffin demanded, his face flushed with anger. A cold voice cut through the commotion. Ambassador Griffin, you are under arrest for high treason against the Tarkalian Empire. Counselor Karos stepped into view, his eyes gleaming with malice. Behind him stood a familiar figure, Zephyr, Emperor Vargon's cybernetic eagle. But something was off. The majestic bird's eyes were vacant, its movements mechanical. Zephyr's been compromised, Zeus realized with a jolt. It's a clone. Before the pets could react, the mind-controlled Zephyr let out a piercing screech. Palace guards swarmed in from all sides, energy nets crackling to life. Zeus felt his limbs growing heavy as the paralyzing field engulfed him. As darkness closed in, Zeus caught a glimpse of Karos's triumphant sneer. The Golden Retriever's last conscious thought was a prayer that someone anyone would come to their aid before it was too late. In the depths of the palace, alarms began to blare. The sound of plasma fire echoed through the corridors, growing closer with each passing moment. Magnus, the combat-trained German shepherd, charged forward, leading a squad of human marines in a desperate rescue mission. Hold the line, Magnus barked, his enhanced vocal cords carrying over the din of battle. We're coming for you, Zeus! As the firefight intensified, none of the combatants noticed a small, sleek shape slipping through the chaos. The Zephyr clone, its programming faltering in the face of overwhelming stimuli, made a fateful decision. With a screech of defiance, it swooped down, talons extended towards the control panel of Zeus's energy cage. In that moment, as freedom beckoned and new allies fought their way closer, Zeus knew that their true battle was only just beginning. Zeus blinked awake, his cybernetic implants recalibrating as the energy field dissipated. The Zephyr clone perched nearby, its talons still smoking from the destroyed control panel. Before Zeus could process the situation, Magnus burst through the doorway, flanked by human marines. Status report, the German shepherd barked, his combat systems scanning for threats. We're okay, Zeus replied, shaking off the last effects of the paralysis. But we need to get to Emperor Vargon immediately. Karos is planning an assassination. As they raced through the palace corridors, plasma fire erupted around them. Zeus ducked, feeling the heat singe his fur. Ambassador Griffin stumbled, caught by a glancing bolt. Keep moving, Magnus shouted, providing covering fire. They burst into the throne room to find Emperor Vargon surrounded by loyalist guards, trading fire with Karos's forces. 
The Zephyr clone screeched, diving at Karos with razor-sharp talons. In the chaos, Zeus locked eyes with Vargon, projecting a telepathic warning. Your Majesty, we must evacuate, Zeus barked, bounding toward the Emperor. Hours later, as the dust settled and Karos's coup crumbled, Emperor Vargon stood before the Galactic Council. His voice rang out, clear and resolute. In light of recent events, I hereby declare the Terran Pet Ambassadors official diplomatic envoys, with full authority to represent Earth in galactic affairs. A ripple of shock passed through the assembled alien dignitaries. Murmurs of protest rose from traditionalist factions, but they were quickly silenced by Vargon's stern gaze. Furthermore, the Emperor continued, I move to grant humanity a provisional seat on this council under the direct supervision of their pet delegation. Zeus felt a surge of pride as he stood beside Ambassador Griffin, watching history unfold. The Golden Retriever's enhanced senses picked up waves of curiosity and excitement emanating from the gathered species. In the days that followed, news of the enhanced pets spread like wildfire across the galaxy. Zeus found himself inundated with requests for interviews, demonstrations, and even adoption inquiries. Holographic displays in bustling alien metropolises showcased pet sits, cybernetically augmented companion animals from Earth. On a newly colonized world at the galaxy's edge, Zeus toured a state-of-the-art breeding and augmentation facility. The air hummed with the sound of advanced machinery and the excited yips of enhanced puppies. Demand is through the roof, the facility's director explained leading Zeus through rows of incubation pods. We can barely keep up with orders. Zeus nodded, his feelings mixed. While he was proud of the progress they'd made, he couldn't shake a nagging sense of unease. Back on Tarkus Prime, Zeus and the remaining ambassadors worked tirelessly alongside Emperor Vargon to strengthen ties with Earth. The Zephyr clone had become a constant presence its loyalty seemingly beyond reproach after its role in foiling Karos's plot. One evening, as Zeus padded through the palace gardens, his enhanced hearing picked up a faint transmission. He froze, focusing his cybernetic systems on the source. The Zephyr clone perched in a nearby tree, its beak moving almost imperceptibly. Asset Talon reporting, the clone whispered. Military data package compiled, awaiting extraction. Zeus's blood ran cold. Before he could act, alarms blared throughout the palace complex. A harried aide burst into the garden. Ambassador Zeus, the aide panted. There's been an incident. A Tarkalian warship fired on human scientists at the Nexus outpost. Zeus raced to the war room, his mind racing. As he entered, he saw Emperor Vargon hunched over a holographic display, his face grim. The Emperor's eyes met Zeus's, filled with worry. I've ordered a stand-down, Vargon said, his voice heavy. But my military is restless. Admiral Voltak, especially, is pushing for retaliation. Before Zeus could respond, a priority communication flashed across the screens. Admiral Voltak's face appeared, his expression cold and determined. Emperor Vargon, Voltak declared, I can no longer stand idle while aliens corrupt our way of life. The Tarkalian Armada now answers to me. We will cleanse our empire of this human infestation. The transmission cut off abruptly. Zeus turned to Vargan, seeing the shock and betrayal on the Emperor's face. In that moment, as alarms blared and chaos descended upon the palace once more, Zeus knew their hard-won peace was about to be shattered. Zeus's fur bristled as the alarms blared throughout the palace. Admiral Voltak's face vanished from the holographic display, leaving Emperor Vargon staring at empty space, his expression a mix of shock and fury. We need to move, Your Majesty, Zeus barked, his cybernetic implants already scanning for potential escape routes. This palace is about to become a target. As if on cue, the ground shook with the first impacts of orbital bombardment. Vargon snapped out of his daze, barking orders to his guards. Evacuate all non-essential personnel. Activate emergency protocols. Zeus and the other pet ambassadors fell into formation around Vargon as they raced through crumbling corridors. The palace shuddered under relentless fire from Voltak's renegade fleet. We need to get to the secure bunker, Vargon shouted over the din. From there, we can coordinate a counterattack and call for aid. 
As they descended into the depths of the palace complex, Zeus caught a flicker of movement from the corner of his eye. The Zephyr clone perched on a nearby console, its beak moving in an unnatural pattern. Asset Talon transmitting strategic data, Zeus's enhanced hearing picked up the barely audible whisper. Bombardment coordinates updated. Without hesitation, Zeus launched himself at the cybernetic eagle. Traitor, he snarled, tackling the clone midair. They tumbled across the floor in a tangle of fur and feathers. Zeus, what are you doing? Vargon cried out in confusion. The clone is a spy, Magnus barked, joining the fray. His powerful jaws clamped down on one of Zephyr's wings, immobilizing the thrashing bird. Mittens, her feline agility augmented by cutting-edge tech, leapt onto a nearby terminal. Her paws flew across the holographic interface, intercepting and decrypting the clone's transmission. It's true, she hissed. The clone has been feeding Voltac tactical data, our defensive positions, shield frequencies, everything. Vargan's face darkened with rage. Destroy that abomination, he ordered, his voice cold. Zeus didn't hesitate. With a swift, precise motion, he severed the clone's neural pathways, rendering it inert. The victory was short-lived, however, as another tremor rocked the complex. We're out of time, Magnus growled. We need to get the Emperor to safety now. They sprinted the remaining distance to the bunker, sealing themselves inside just as the palace above them collapsed under the relentless barrage. Inside the reinforced chamber, Vargon wasted no time. He strode to a secure communication array, his fingers flying across the controls. This is Emperor Vargon of the Tarkalian Empire, he spoke, his voice steady despite the chaos. To any Earth forces within range, we are under attack by rebel elements of our own military. I formally request immediate military aid under the terms of our alliance. As Vargon's message echoed across the stars, Zeus and his fellow ambassadors gathered around a tactical display. Red icons representing Voltax ships swarmed above Tarkas, while blue markers indicating loyalist forces dwindled rapidly. This is bad, Buddy muttered, his corgi eyes wide with worry. Even if Earth responds immediately, it'll take time for their fleet to arrive. We need to buy that time. Zeus nodded grimly. We will. We have to. He turned to Vargon, who had finished his transmission. Your Majesty, what assets do we still have available? Before Vargon could respond, a priority alert flashed across the screens. A grizzled human face appeared. Admiral Hawkins of Earth's expeditionary fleet. Emperor Vargon, this is Admiral Hawkins. The man's gravelly voice filled the bunker. We've received your distress call and are mobilizing all available ships. ETA to Tarkas system, 72 hours. Relief washed over Vargon's features, but Zeus's tactical subroutines were already calculating the odds. Three days was an eternity in a battle like this. Admiral, Zeus spoke up, stepping into view of the transmission. This is Ambassador Zeus. We're grateful for Earth's response, but we may not have 72 hours. Is there any way to expedite your arrival? Hawkins's eyebrows raised slightly at being addressed by a dog, but he recovered quickly. We're pushing our engines to the limit, Ambassador, but we're encountering heavy resistance en route. Cerberus terror cells have gone active across multiple colonies, disrupting our supply lines and staging guerrilla strikes. Zeus processed this new information, his enhanced mind racing through potential scenarios. Cerberus, he growled. They must be working with Voltac. This coup is bigger than we realized. As if to punctuate his words, another explosion rocked the bunker. Dust rained down from the ceiling as Vargon's staff worked frantically to maintain their defenses. We'll hold out as long as we can, Admiral, Vargon declared, his voice steady despite the strain. But please, hurry. As Hawkins' transmission cut out, Zeus turned to his fellow ambassadors. Their eyes met in silent understanding. The real fight was just beginning. Zeus's enhanced senses were on high alert as the bunker trembled under another barrage. The Golden Retriever's cybernetic implants processed tactical data at lightning speed, formulating strategies even as debris rained down around them. 
We need to consolidate our remaining forces, Zeus barked, his paws dancing across a holographic display. Emperor Vargon, do we still have control of the planetary defense grid? The Tarkalian ruler nodded grimly. For now, but Voltax ships are targeting the control nodes. We're losing them fast. Zeus's ears perked up as an idea formed. What if we could use the grid offensively, turn those defense satellites into makeshift weapons? Vargon's eyes widened. It's possible, but we'd need to rewrite the targeting algorithms on the fly. Leave that to me, Mittens purred, her feline form already interfacing with the bunker's central computer. I'll have those birds singing a new tune in no time. As Mittens worked her digital magic, Zeus coordinated with the remaining Loyalist forces. Human marines fought alongside Tarkalian troops, holding off Voltax ground assault. The alliance forged in crisis was proving its mettle. Hours blurred into days as the battle raged on. Zeus and his fellow pet ambassadors worked tirelessly, their augmented bodies pushed to the limit. They became the linchpin of the resistance, their unique abilities bridging gaps between human and Tarkalian tactics. On the third day, as supplies ran low and hope dwindled, a new alarm blared through the bunker. Zeus's heart raced, fearing another breakthrough by Voltax forces. Instead, Emperor Vargon's face lit up with joy. It's the Earth Fleet, he exclaimed, watching the tactical display. They've arrived. The tide of battle shifted rapidly. Admiral Hawkins's ships tore through Voltax blockade, their advanced weaponry making short work of the rebel vessels. On the ground, fresh troops and supplies reinvigorated the beleaguered defenders. In the chaotic days that followed, Zeus found himself thrust into the center of galactic politics. As the dust settled and the full scope of Cerberus's involvement came to light, the Galactic Council convened an emergency session. Zeus stood before the assembled alien dignitaries, his golden fur gleaming under the chamber's lights. He felt the weight of billions of lives, human and alien alike, resting on his shoulders. Honored members of the Council, Zeus began, his voice clear and steady. The events on Tarkus have demonstrated the strength of the alliance between Earth and the Tarkalian Empire, but they have also exposed vulnerabilities in our galactic community. Murmurs rippled through the chamber as Zeus continued. I stand before you, not just as a pet or as an ambassador, but as a symbol of what we can achieve when we look beyond our differences. The debate raged for hours. Zeus watched as centuries-old prejudices clashed with the undeniable reality of humanity's crucial role in averting disaster. Finally, a compromise was reached. Earth will be granted provisional membership, the council chair announced, with a single council seat to be occupied by Ambassador Zeus. A mixture of cheers and protests erupted. Zeus caught sight of the human delegation, their faces a mix of pride and frustration. He knew this was not the full victory they had hoped for, but it was a start. As the newly minted Ambassador Zeus settled into his quarters aboard the Council's space station, he gazed out at the stars. The real work was just beginning. He had a galaxy to win over, one planet at a time. Time to get to work, Zeus muttered, padding over to his communication array. He had interviews to schedule, initiatives to plan, and a team of Earth Pets to mobilize. The Earth Pets Ambassadorial Education Corps wouldn't build itself, after all. As he began composing his first official address as Earth's representative, Zeus allowed himself a small smile. Who would have thought a golden retriever from Earth would be shaping the future of the galaxy? The console beeped, indicating an incoming transmission. Another crisis, no doubt. Another chance to prove that humanity, and their faithful companions, belonged among the stars. Stars. Another crisis, no doubt. Another chance to prove that humanity and their faithful companions belonged among the galactic community. Zeus accepted the transmission, his enhanced vision focusing on the holographic display. The face of Counselor Zixthar materialized, its tentacles twitching with barely concealed agitation. Ambassador Zeus, we require your presence immediately. There's been an incident. The Golden Retriever's ears perked up his cybernetic implants already processing the counselor's elevated stress levels. I'm on my way, he replied, cutting the transmission short. 
As Zeus padded through the corridors of the Galactic Council Station, he couldn't shake the feeling that this was more than just another diplomatic squabble. His suspicions were confirmed when he entered the council chambers and saw the assembled dignitaries, their faces etched with concern. Ambassador, the council chair began, your Petvoy program has encountered a significant setback. Zeus's heart sank as the chair recounted the disappearance of the Petvoy team on Araxis. The chamber erupted into chaos as accusations flew. Some counselors demanded an immediate military response, while others called for Zeus's resignation. Silence, Zeus barked, his amplified voice cutting through the din. We cannot act rashly. Let me handle this personally. Despite his impassioned plea, Zeus found himself overruled. Admiral Krakus, a hardliner with a reputation for brutality, was given command of a pacification force. Zeus watched helplessly as the Admiral's fleet departed for Araxis, knowing that diplomacy had just been thrown out the airlock. Days later, reports of Krakis's heavy-handed tactics flooded in. Zeus paced his quarters, his enhanced mind racing through scenarios. When news broke of Pitvoy casualties in the crossfire, he knew he had to act. Defying council orders, Zeus commandeered a small stealth ship. With a team of his most trusted operatives, a mix of enhanced animals and sympathetic aliens, they set course for Araxis. The planet's surface was a war zone. Smoke rose from bombed-out cities, and the air crackled with weapons fire. Zeus's team moved swiftly, evading patrols and gathering intelligence. They found High Priestess Miranda in a hidden bunker her once resplendent robes now tattered and stained. Zeus approached her cautiously, his translator working overtime to convey sincerity in the Araxian tongue. High Priestess, he began, I come seeking peace. Miranda's eyes narrowed. Peace? While your kind slaughter our people? Zeus shook his head. Those actions do not represent Earth or the Council. Please, let us find a way to end this conflict before more lives are lost. Their negotiations were tense, but progress was made. Miranda agreed to release human captives in exchange for Krakis's withdrawal. Zeus transmitted the terms to the council, hope kindling in his chest. That hope was shattered when Krakis, in a move of unconscionable cruelty, executed the captured Pete Voys and launched a biogenocidal strike on Miranda's capital. The Araxian response was swift and merciless a planet-wide purge of human colonists began. Zeus and his team found themselves caught in the middle of the bloodbath. They fought their way through burning streets, rescuing who they could. Human colonists, loyal pet boys, even Araxian moderates, all were welcomed aboard their overtaxed ship. As they broke atmosphere pursued by Araxian fighters, Zeus received a priority transmission. Purity Front terror cells had launched coordinated attacks across multiple systems, taking advantage of the chaos. The Golden Retriever's fur was matted with blood and ash. His cybernetic eye cracked from a close call with an Araxian plasma weapon. Yet as he looked at the desperate faces of those he'd managed to save, Zeus knew his fight was just getting started. Setting course for the nearest safe harbor, Zeus began composing a message to the Council. He would make them see reason, force them to understand the consequences of their actions. And if they wouldn't listen, well, then it was time for this old dog to learn some new tricks. The ship's engines hummed as they entered hyperspace, leaving the inferno of Araxis behind. Zeus stared out at the swirling vortex, his enhanced mind already formulating plans for the battles to come, both on the field and in the council chambers. Zeus slumped in his quarters, the weight of recent events crushing his spirit. The Araxis genocide played on repeat in his mind, a constant reminder of humanity's precarious position in the galactic community. He stared at his reflection in the polished metal wall, noting the new scars etched into his cybernetic eye. A soft chime interrupted his brooding. Ambassador, you have a visitor, the station's AI announced. High Priestess Miranda of Araxis requests an audience. Zeus's ears perked up in surprise. Granted, he barked, curiosity overriding his exhaustion. The door slid open, revealing the once proud Araxian leader. Her robes, tattered and stained, hung loosely on her frame. Miranda's eyes, once filled with righteous fury, 
now brimmed with a mixture of fear and desperation. Ambassador Zeus, she began, her translator struggling to convey the emotion in her voice. I, I come seeking asylum. Zeus tilted his head, processing her words. Asylum? But why? We were deceived, Miranda interrupted, her words tumbling out in a rush. Purity front, they manipulated us, fed us lies about human subjugation, pushed us towards war. Her shoulders sagged. I am complicit in genocide, Ambassador, but please give me a chance to make amends. Zeus studied her, his enhanced senses detecting no deception. A plan began to form in his mind. Priestess, would you be willing to testify before the council to expose Purity Front's tactics? Miranda nodded vigorously. Yes, anything to stop this madness. The next few days were a whirlwind of activity. Zeus called in every favor, leveraged every connection to secure Miranda's appearance before the council. When the day arrived, he stood beside her as she addressed the assembled dignitaries. Honored members of the council, Miranda began, her voice carrying across the chamber. I come before you to confess my role in a terrible deception. As Miranda spoke, detailing Purity Front's insidious methods, the manufactured terrorist attacks, the framing of humans, Zeus watched the counselor's reactions. Shock gave way to outrage, then to a steadfast perseverance. When Miranda finished, a heavy silence fell over the chamber. It was broken by an unexpected voice. I propose a military coalition, rumbled Ambassador Kralt of the Vordak Empire. The stoic alien's words sent a ripple of surprise through the assembly. We must crush Purity Front before more atrocities occur. Zeus's cybernetic eye whirred as he processed this turn of events. Kraut had always been staunchly anti-Earth. Yet here he was, proposing an unprecedented partnership with humanity. The council erupted into heated debate, but the outcome was clear. United by shared trauma, they voted unanimously to back Kralt's proposal. In the days that followed, Zeus found himself overseeing the integration of a multinational Pet Boy attachment into the Allied Strike Forces. He watched with pride as enhanced animals from Earth worked alongside alien specialists, their unique abilities complementing each other in ways no one had anticipated. Reports flooded in of Pet Boy successes behind enemy lines. A team of enhanced otters sabotaged a purity front communications hub on a water world. Cybernetically augmented falcons provided crucial reconnaissance for major offensives. With each victory, the noose tightened around purity front's neck. But the final battle loomed, an assault on the zealot's homeworld of Venaru. As Zeus prepared to accompany the invasion force, he felt a familiar presence at his side. Magnus, his loyal German shepherd bodyguard, stood ready for action. You don't have to come, old friend, Zeus said softly. Magnus's cybernetic eye glowed as he responded. Where you go, I go. That's what partners do. The surface of Venaru was a nightmare of twisting alien architecture and bioluminescent flora. Zeus led a team of pet boy commandos through the planet's labyrinthine underworld, clearing the way for the main invasion force. They were nearing a critical junction when Zeus's enhanced hearing picked up the telltale whine of an antimatter warhead. Time seemed to slow as he processed the threat, calculated trajectories, realized there was no time to... Magnus moved faster than Zeus had ever seen. The German shepherd launched himself towards the warhead, his body shielding a group of civilian refugees who had become caught in the crossfire. Magnus, no! Zeus howled. But it was too late. The explosion rocked the cavern. And when the dust settled, Magnus lay motionless. Zeus fought through the haze of grief and pain, pushing the team forward. The battle raged on, but the outcome was never in doubt. Purity Front's forces crumbled under the combined might of the Galactic Alliance. In the aftermath, Zeus stood before a solemn gathering, his fur singed and matted with blood. We are victorious, he began, his voice heavy with emotion. But victory comes at a cost. Today we honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice. As Zeus eulogized Magnus and the other fallen heroes, he noticed Ambassador Kraut's absence. The news came later. The Vordak diplomat had succumbed to injuries sustained during the campaign. Exhausted and heartbroken, Zeus prepared to return to his duties on the council station. 
but fate had one more surprise in store. Ambassador Zeus, a Vordak aide, approached him. I bring news from our homeworld. Our leaders have chosen a successor for Ambassador Kralt's position. Zeus nodded wearily, wondering why he was being informed. The aide's next words stopped him cold. They have nominated you, Ambassador, to represent both humanity and the Vordak Empire on the Council. Zeus blinked, his cybernetic implant struggling to process this information. As the implications sank in, he realized the magnitude of the task before him. The Purity Front may have been vanquished, but the real work of uniting the galaxy was just beginning. With a deep breath, Zeus straightened his posture and faced the aide. I accept, he said, his voice filled with quiet grit. When do we begin? Zeus stepped onto the council station, his dual ambassadorship weighing heavily on his enhanced frame. The corridors bustled with a mix of human and Vordak officials, their curious glances a reminder of the unprecedented nature of his position. His first task loomed ahead, the Armistice Summit on Rikar. As Zeus boarded the diplomatic shuttle, he caught sight of his reflection in the polished hull. The scars from Venaru were still fresh, a constant reminder of the cost of peace. The neutral colony of Rikar was a jewel of diplomacy, its gleaming spires a testament to intergalactic cooperation. Zeus padded through the summit venue, nodding to familiar faces and cataloging potential allies. A commotion at the entrance drew his attention. The Coven delegation had arrived, their eyes burning with barely concealed resentment. Zeus's cybernetic implants registered elevated stress levels among the group. Ambassador Zeus, a Coven representative approached, voice dripping with false courtesy. How unexpected to see Earth's lapdog representing the mighty Vordak. Zeus's fur bristled, but he kept his voice level. We're all here for peace, Counselor. Let's focus on that. The summit proceedings began smoothly, but Zeus couldn't shake a growing sense of unease. His enhanced senses picked up subtle discrepancies, whispered conversations, furtive glances. A deafening explosion rocked the chamber. Smoke filled the air as figures in coven military gear stormed in, weapons raised. Nobody move, their leader bellowed. This summit is now under our control. Chaos erupted. Diplomats scrambled for cover as the terrorists systematically rounded up key figures. Zeus found himself face to face with the coven leader, a cruel smile twisting the alien's features. The great peacemaker, the terrorists sneered, pressing a weapon to Zeus's head. Let's see how your precious council responds now. Hours crawled by as the hostage situation unfolded. Zeus, bound and monitored, used every ounce of his enhanced intellect to analyze potential escape routes. His cybernetic eyes scanned for weaknesses in the terrorist's patrol patterns. A familiar scent caught his attention, the faint musk of his pet boy operatives. They had come, despite the council's paralysis. Hope kindled in Zeus's chest as he prepared for the coming storm. The rescue unfolded with brutal efficiency. Enhanced otters slipped through ventilation shafts, disabling security systems. Cybernetic Falcons provided real-time intelligence as the strike team closed in. Zeus seized his moment, using his augmented strength to break free of his restraints. He lunged at the nearest guard, teeth bared. The two grappled, crashing through a nearby door and into a maintenance corridor. The coven leader appeared, eyes wild with rage. You've ruined everything, he snarled, charging at Zeus. What followed was a desperate struggle. Zeus's enhanced reflexes gave him an edge, but the coven's raw fury was overwhelming. They traded blows, smashing through equipment and leaving a trail of destruction. Zeus felt his strength waning, the toll of recent battles catching up to him. The coven pinned him against a wall, hands closing around his throat. Spots danced in Zeus's vision as he struggled for air. A blur of motion caught his eye. His pet void team had arrived, led by a sleek cybernetic cheetah. The coven never stood a chance. In the aftermath, Zeus stood before the rescued diplomats, his fur matted with blood and his cybernetic eye flickering from damage sustained in the fight. As accolades poured in, he felt a deep weariness settle into his bones. The victory was hollow. Zeus had seen the hatred in the Coven's eyes, a reflection of the deep-seated conflicts that still plagued the galaxy. As he prepared his report for the Council, 
Zeus couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning of a long, arduous road ahead. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.